Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to some of you and peace and uh, general greetings to the rest of you. Um, previously I was speaking on uh, a refutation of Shadid Muhammad against which I was not prepared to defend him. Um, this time I'm going to talk briefly about why it is that the black cause and the Arab cause are not the same and why they're not on equal footing and why they cannot be given equal consideration fairly. Um, and the bulk of the reason really comes down to two reasons. First off, the Arab cause, which I'm going to use the Arab Spring to exemplify, and even uh, and, and I'm not going to touch upon uh, the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire um, because I'm not really sure about what that was about. I don't really know why. Uh, that happened. That's a history with which I'm not familiar, even though I had to teach history at one point. I was never required to teach or study that particular history. But when it comes down to the Arab cause of today, I'll use the Arab Spring to exemplify it. And I'll say this. Um, number one, we know that the Arab Spring had nothing to do with Islam and Omar Ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, told somebody that we are a people, talking about the Arabs, we are a people who had no honor, and Allah honored us with Islam, and if we seek honor through a means other than that, we will be disgraced and humiliated. And this is what we're seeing happening today. Democracy is not going to be for the Muslims. And I, I can't really explain it any better than Omar explained it. If you were Arab, you will have no dignity outside of Islam, period. If you are an Arab Christian, you will have no dignity because you know, Christianity has pretty much been successfully hijacked by Europe and European Christians don't love Arab Christians for that matter. They don't love black Christians, um, but Arab Christians oftentimes feel somewhat safe. That's not true. By the same token, on the, uh, on the flip side, is another thing that we oftentimes tend to forget. Um, black folks have gone through more persecution based on their phenotype than anyone else has. Now, I'm not saying nobody else ever went through that. I mean, if you look like an Arab, that can also be problematic. I know that this is true, that this can happen. But I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, looking like an Arab uh, or the stereotypical Arab means that you're going to have the same problems that black people have. You're not. If you look like the stereotypical Arab, meaning you're not quite black and you're not quite white, um, much like Latin Americans don't look, on average, 80% of the time, don't look exactly from Africa and they don't look like they're exactly from Europe. It's the same thing. You're going to go through something not quite as bad as what black folks will go through, but you will go through it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you black folks, um, you're going to go through stuff that other minorities will not go through as long as Europe is in power. And now at this point, if, if we woke up tomorrow and there was no European, or at least there were no Europeans in power, every European leader was gone. And all you had was a few regular Europeans just living their lives still here. If we woke up tomorrow and that was the case, Whoever filled the power vacuum, if they are not black, will turn around and do the exact same thing at this point because of the brainwashing. The inferiority complex that we black folks have is global and actually it's worse in other parts of the world. So two main reasons that the two are not equal. Number one, black folk got to go through more stuff based on their phenotype alone than anyone else. A black Arab or a black non-Arab, a black Latino or a black non-Latino, a black African, period, a black... West and Central African is going to go through worse than any other phenotype at this point. Because on top of being jet black and extra beady nappy hair, they also got wide noses and big lips and big feet. And people like making fun of the languages that they speak, so they're they really going to catch it. Some East Africans, not all of course, I know, but some East Africans would even make fun of West and Central Africans. I mean, how do you think this thing started in Rwanda? The Hutu? 
and the Tutsi used to be two people that could not get along based on how they looked. And this is before the Belgians came in. So um, I would suggest if I believed in this kind of thing and I was not Muslim, I would think that simply having thin nose and thin lips would make somebody predisposed to hate others who have wide noses and larger lips. I would actually believe that if it were not for me being Muslim. But the two are not equal. Black people, whenever they unify and form a type of common defense, other people come to tell them, especially Muslims, come to tell them that this is bottle, this is wrong, that you can't do that. Well, it is true that Islam and every other religion have to be distinct from each other, that's true. But black people are the only people that, who by definition of their race have to form a common defense against discrimination from every other corner, even from Muslims that aren't black. No other race really has to do this per se. They just wouldn't have to. You can take your average mestizo that's Latino, and if they accept Islam, hey, they accept Islam. And if in two generations their children speak Arabic, they might be indistinct from other uh, Arabs, might be distinct from other Arabs, maybe just less facial hair on average. And you know what? They may be very well accepted. And uh, it could happen. It's conceivable. You got black people in Arab countries right now, and they've been here for six generations, and they speak fluent Arabic and no other language as a first language. And you know, they are still, still they're kept at arm's length in some ways, forms, and fashions, even though Arabs don't have this hatred for black people that Europe has. They still have somewhat of a disdain in some places, and in other places just a distance. It, it varies from country to country, but it gets bad in some places. There is no black hatred of Arabs. It doesn't exist. There's nowhere where it is, there's no black nation where it is unsafe to be a pale skinned Arab. There's no context in which that's the case. That's the difference. Bottom line. The Arabs were warned. You're Arab and you're proud of that. Well, you better be proud of nothing but Islam. That's it. You ain't got nothing else to be proud of. Everything else is actually an embarrassment to you if you really want to come down to it. Hospitality and Islam are the things to be proud of for the Arabs. You take the rest, it's an embarrassment. And every time they strayed away from Islam, even in recent history, that was also embarrassing. That's real. Tribal warfare in the peninsula, this happened within the last three generations sometimes. Um, hello, where in Islam does it say you can fight another Muslim tribe over a camel or a goat or a sheep? Seriously. So... That being said, look, um, there's this idea among the Arabs that their blood is holy, and it's not. So um, I could go on longer, but I, don't, I really would hate to have to do that. I need to work on shortening these messages. So I'm sufficing it to say that, bottom line, the Arab cause is crap. It's bottle. And many Arabs who would love to turn around and tell black people the black cause and black unity of bottle don't understand that these may not be Islamic causes per se, but we have, but they got to realize that until they, that means pretty much everybody that is not black changes their idea about race and color. Black people don't have a choice. This is forced on us. I don't uh, stand up on behalf of a black Christian if he's persecuted because, uh, I believe that all black people are morally uh, superior to everybody else. I do it because that black Christian is being attacked for being black. And that's not fair to them. That's why. My brothers are the Muslims of any faith that are not racist. Not colorist, not nationalist, and not tribalist. Those are my brothers. But the fact is I know that black folks are being persecuted. And I know it's for nothing other than the way we look. That's all it takes for many people, even for some Muslims to do it. So when I take up for somebody that's black and they're Christian, don't say a damn thing to me. I may punch you in your nose even if you are a Muslim, even if you just prayed next to me a few minutes ago. Punch, you're going to bloody nose if you ain't careful. You may have a bruise on your ribs or something. I'm not playing games about this. The bottom line is that the Arab cause is crap. It is more bottled than the black cause. The black cause is a reaction 
to an emergency situation. The Arab cause is nationalism. That's it. It's just plain, flat out, Asabiya. And I'm going to give you proof. Look at the Arab Spring. Where did it begin? And what law was just passed recently? There is no positive effect for a Muslim, a real practicing Muslim, in Tunisia of the Arab Spring. None at all. There is none. If there is, I'll shut my mouth and let a Tunisian tell me. But as far as I understand right now, no. Polygamy is still illegal, but you can have as many girlfriends as you want. Now they just told Muslim women there, you can marry non-Muslim men. This is not permissible to make even as a law. It's not. Democracy ain't going to work for you. It just ain't. So, sorry. What happened in Tunisia just now? A law that is not even legal to make. And yet and still, it is a law. Well, guess what, folks? That's the Arab Spring for you. I said years ago, if it's a Muslim Spring, great. If it's just an Arab Spring, to hell with it. Well, now we got our answer. So, the Arab causes bottle, the black causes a necessity. That's the end of the story. Now, change the necessity, and then we can change the definitions and the categorizations. I hope this message was a benefit. Salam alaikum.